My name is David Lepofsky. I am blind. I live in Toronto, Canada. I'm a retired lawyer and a volunteer disability rights advocate. I'm the chair of the Accessibility for Ontarians with Disabilities Act Alliance. I'm also the visiting research professor of disability rights at the University of Western Ontario's Faculty of Law. Let me show you a dangerous new disability barrier that the City of Toronto has recently created in the heart of busy Midtown Toronto using public money. Here is a new sidewalk on the north side of Eglinton Avenue running east from the Eglinton and Avenue Road intersection. I have safely and independently walked alone on this sidewalk many times using my white cane. Before the city of Toronto made a very dangerous change to it, the city put a new bike path on the sidewalk right alongside the road. As I walk on the sidewalk, I have no way of knowing that there's a bike path here. Even if you told me that there's a bike path on the sidewalk, I can't tell where it is, so I can avoid walking in the bike path. This is the first time I've encountered this ridiculous sidewalk design. I have walked alone independently and safely on countless sidewalks. I am trained to use my cane systematically to tap the ground in front of me where I'm going to step. My cane is an extension of my index finger. It points at the ground in front of me. I tap the tip of my cane back and forth in front of each foot, or I sweep my cane on the sidewalk back and forth in front of each foot. Before I step, the cane tells me if there is an obstacle. Here I am walking on a typical sidewalk. I use my cane to follow the sidewalk edge, either this edge on my left side, which has a step down to the road, or the edge on my right, which has grass along the edge. We call this shorelining. On this typical sidewalk, it is easy to shoreline. I can even switch from using one shoreline to the other. Here, I've switched to a more cluttered sidewalk. It is harder to shoreline along a cluttered sidewalk, like this one on the north side of Eglinton West, near the corner of Headington. It is easy to walk east on the north side of Eglinton approaching Avenue Road, shoreline along the edge of the sidewalk to my right, where it steps down to the road. There is a bike path to my right, down at street level. It poses no danger to me. I know I am safe up on the sidewalk. But once I cross Avenue Road and walk east on the north side of Eglinton, the disaster begins. On this new sidewalk, the city built this new bike path up on the sidewalk alongside the road. There is no clear, obvious cane detectable barrier between the bike path and the sidewalk's pedestrian area. When I sweep my cane back and forth in front of me, nothing tells me there's a bike path here. I only know there's a bike path here because a sighted friend told me. I'm walking east shorelining along the edge of the sidewalk to my right. The city can't claim that there is a clear and obvious tactile difference between the bike path and the rest of the sidewalk. That would be dead wrong. Toronto sidewalks have notoriously inconsistent tactile textures from one meter to the next. It would be foolish for a blind person to rely on any of that. This is very dangerous for a blind person using a white cane or a guide dog. The dog won't know that this is a dangerous bike path. If I leave this Eglinton Avenue pizza joint and walk across the sidewalk to the curbside to wait for an Uber, I'm a sitting duck as I cross the bike path. As a lifelong Toronto resident, this is infuriating. It feels as if my city has posted a sign here saying blind people are not welcome. It's a cruel slap in the face in a city and province that say they are committed to becoming accessible to people with disabilities. This design endangers other pedestrians. If a cyclist rides towards me when I'm walking on the bike path, they may have to swerve into the pedestrian area to avoid hitting me. This design endangers sighted pedestrians who are looking down at their phone texting and may unintentionally stray into the bike path. This design endangers little kids who might not expect bikes to be racing at them somewhere in the midst of a sidewalk. This design endangers cyclists. If I unknowingly walk close to the bike path, my cane could get caught in their spokes. Every few meters, there is a tree in the middle of the sidewalk between the bike path and the pedestrian area. Trees in the middle of the sidewalk are more clutter that makes it harder to navigate. It certainly doesn't warn me that there's a bike path here. Who designed this? Who approved this? If they had bothered to think about it, it would be instantly obvious that this is dangerous for people with disabilities like me. Not only is this bike path dangerous, 
It is illegal. It violates the right to equality for people with disabilities in the Charter of Rights, the Ontario Human Rights Code, and the Accessibility for Ontarians with Disabilities Act. It is illegal to create new accessibility barriers like this. This danger would get even worse if the City of Toronto, God forbid, legalized those dangerous electric scooters. A few city council members want to allow them on bike paths. Here, that would be legalizing e-scooters on this sidewalk. E-scooters are a silent menace, ridden by uninsured, unlicensed, untrained joyriders. Many disability organizations want e-scooters banned in all public areas, including, of course, sidewalks. Here is a screenshot of a CBC News report about an innocent pedestrian on a Toronto sidewalk who was hit by an illegally ridden e-scooter and knocked unconscious. Spike paths are a great thing. We need more of them. Toronto could have easily saved public money and a lot of grief if they had designed this bike path sensibly. This is not rocket science. Toronto must immediately remove the bike path from this sidewalk and from any other sidewalks. No city should ever build a bike path in the midst of a sidewalk. Any new bike path should be built at road level, not at sidewalk level, clearly divided from the sidewalks. Build a small barrier between the bike path and car traffic. It is no solution to build a bike path in the midst of a sidewalk and put some kind of guidance tiles or bumps or other tactile markers in the sidewalk. It won't work. Many blind people won't know they're there or won't know what they mean. Even if they installed some sort of tactile line, I won't know which side of the line is the safe side. It would be a waste of money. The city should make public who approved this dangerous design. They should never again design public infrastructure. Toronto's mayor and infrastructure committee should join me at this sidewalk. Walk in my shoes. Tell me how I'm supposed to know where it is safe to walk on this sidewalk. The Ontario government must also step up to the plate. We need a new provincial regulation setting safe bike path accessibility standards so that this never happens again. The Accessibility for Ontarians with Disabilities Act requires the province to lead Ontario to become accessible to people with disabilities by 2025 by enacting and enforcing standards like that. Creating new barriers like this wastes public money. It wastes public money if each city has to reinvent the accessibility wheel. People with disabilities should not be treated as second-class citizens. We deserve better. Learn more at www.aodaalliance.org and on Twitter at AODA Alliance.